Hi, it's Beth at the Somerset County Library, and today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite activities, knitting. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about knitting cables, because when I do a knitting project, I like something that makes me have to concentrate. So something that has a pattern in it, that has some movement, is more fun to me than just doing the simple knitting. And recently I read an article um, published by Interweave about some of the benefits of knitting. The article was actually entitled, Put Down Your Phone and Pick Up Your Knitting, 10 Reasons Why You Should. I'll skip over the part about the phone, but what I wanted to focus on is the links between knitting and mental health. So some of the health mental health benefits associated with knitting are say focus on the present moment. So when you're knitting, you're not your mind's not going all different directions, you're focused on one thing. Creates a sense of personal control. High arousal, positive effect, a feeling enthusiastic and happy. Satisfaction with one's life. An altered sense of time. For me, when I'm absorbed in a project, I forget about the time and the stress of my to-do lists, which are always time-oriented. A feeling of meaning and purpose. And my favorite as one psychologist interpreted from the work of flow expert, Mahali Sixsentmia, I don't know what her last name is, um, feeling so engrossed in the experience that other needs become negligible. To me, this means knitting offers me a mental escape from adulting with all its anxiety inducing pressures. It's like I get to be a kid again for an hour on the floor of my childhood bedroom, completely absorbed in my Lego castle populated by matchbox cars, G.I. Joes, and my little ponies. Knitting is, also provides a, a cognitive activity because it keeps, it keeps your brain sharp and can slow the effects of aging on your brain, even in people diagnosed with dementia. So that's another good reason to knit. Knitting is good for your heart. One doctor was quoted in the New York Times on the topic, knitting and crocheting can lower heart rate and blood pressure and reduce harmful blood levels of the stress hormone cortisol. Knitting can keep you occupied and keep your mind off some pretty ugly things, such as chronic pain, smoking, binge eating compulsions, or OCD checking behaviors. I know when I'm knitting, it's hard eating at the same time when you're knitting something, so it keeps my hands busy. And what can we conclude from all these studies? Knitting makes us better humans. I mean, making time for hobbies can boost your mental health. And a strong center will surely make you a more effective contributor to your family, your community, and your country, while at the same time improving your long-term health and outlook. So they encourage you to try trading some phone time for some knitting time each day. When you sit down to knit, put your phone somewhere out of reach and turn off its sound so you can fall into flow state and really become absorbed. Put on some classical music, such as Vivaldi's Four Seasons, which was found in one study to improve brain function in adults who listen to it while executing cognitive tasks. So those are just some really good reasons that you should pick up some knitting. So, today I want to talk to you about cables. I said cables are one of my favorite things to do. I have some cables on my sweater here today. And so, let's get going.
I've been working on a afghan. It's made up of blocks and I have two more to finish. I'm going to show you how I've been working with the cables. And you can see this block is made up of different types of cables. And even though it all looks very different, it's made using just two different stitches. It's just a matter of the patterns are made up of just a bit blah, 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 blah. So even though there's different patterns going on in here, this is made up of just two different stitches. And the patterns are created just with the variation of how those stitches are combined. And in preparation for this, I was looking up what the different cables are called. So I have an Irish crochet sweater that I'm wearing here. And I know that just like with quilting, the different patterns have different meanings. So I wanted to see what the different patterns were called. And I found out that this pattern here is actually called the hollowed oak. Now this cable is just a simple cable. It's a rope cable. And then this one has an encased or entwined cable. So I have my rope cable going up through the middle and then I have these two intertwining cables that are going in between the two rope cables. So let me show you what I'm doing. I have my square in progress here. And I have my pattern. Now these two different types of cables in my directions are shown as two different patterns. And the one pattern is made up of 20 rows and the other pattern is made up of 28 rows. So in order to try to keep these all straight, what I do is write out the row numbers. So I start out with start out with the second pattern here, which is only 20 rows. So I have my 1 through 20 here. And I actually added some notes in there because I tend to skip my knot there. So if I write a K at the beginning of the row, it sort of reminds me that I need to make sure I make my knot there. And then this first pattern, even though it's the second pattern in the, in the square, the first pattern is made up of 28 rows. So this pattern actually starts on the second row. So I have it starting here. So when I'm working row two of this pattern, I'm working row one of this pattern. So then I go one through 28 there, and then it just keeps repeating. I've been working on a afghan. It's made up of blocks, and I have two more to finish. I'm going to show you how I've been working with the cables. And you can see this block is made up of different types of cables. And even though it all looks very different, it's made using just two different stitches. And the patterns are created just with the variation of how those stitches are combined. And in preparation for this, I was looking up 
what the different cables are called. So I have an Irish crochet sweater that I'm wearing here. And I know that just like with quilting, the different patterns have different meanings. So I wanted to see what the different patterns were called. And I found out that this pattern here is actually called the hollowed oak. Now this cable is just a simple cable. It's a rope cable. And then this one has an encased or entwined cable. So I have my rope cable going up through the middle and then I have these two intertwining cables that are going in between the two roped cables. So let me show you what I'm doing. I have my square in progress here. And I have my pattern. Now these two different types of cables in my directions are shown as two different patterns. And the one pattern is made up of 20 rows and the other pattern is made up of 28 rows. So in order to try to keep these all straight, what I do is write out the row numbers. So I start out with, start out with the second pattern here which is only 20 rows. So I have my one through 20 here. And I actually added some notes in there because I tend to skip my knot there. So if I write a K at the beginning of the row, it sort of reminds me that I need to make sure I make my knot there. And then this first pattern even though it's the second pattern in the in the square. The first pattern is made up of 28 rows. So this pattern actually starts on the second row. So I have it starting here. So when I'm working row two of this pattern, I'm working row one of this pattern. So then I go one through 28 there, and then it just keeps repeating. So down here, when I'm working row one of the first pattern, I'm working row 20 of the second pattern. So it can get a little confusing, but this helps keep helps me keep track of where I am in the pattern. And then I just make a hat make a hash mark and plus it helps me remember how many rows I've done. So I don't have to keep going back and counting rows. So that's how I figure out which pattern or which row I'm on. So I'm up to row two and row 13. I also, when I'm working different patterns, I use my stitch markers to indicate where one pattern starts and one pattern ends. So this is one complete pattern this is the second complete pattern, and then this is a third complete pattern. And it starts out with a stockinette stitch, which is just, just doing a purl stitch on the one side and a knit stitch on the other side. So I'm going to start with three purls. to my pattern and I am on row 
two, which does have a knot. And my pattern is a Pro 5. Knit two, make a knot, knit two, and then pro five. When you do the pro, you go to the front of the stitch. And then when you do the knit, you come in from the front to the back. So I'll knit two. I'm going to make a knot. So I'm going to insert my hook as if I was going to knit. When I make my knot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going through the front of the loop, yarn over, pull through, and I'm not taking that loop off of my needle yet. Now I'm going to knit into the back of that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and do that front, back, front, back, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one more time in the front. So I have seven stitches on this needle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this first stitch that I have on the needle, go into the next stitch, and I'm going to pass that over top of that first stitch. I'm going to do the same thing with the next one, being careful to keep that first stitch on there. The third one, fourth one, one and the sixth one. So I'm left with just one stitch from from the seven. I'm down to just one stitch. And then I'm going to knit the next stitch in the next one. And you can see I have it forms a little bobble or knot, popcorn stitch, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to purl the last five stitches. Okay, the next pattern. Start with the purl two. And then on my first cable here, I've already, the row or two before, so two rows before this, I already did a, a twist. So this is just going to be straight knitting. All right, and I am on row 13 means I'm going to purl four and then I'm going to make one. Now what that means is I'm going to be adding a stitch here. In this section there's a lot of increases in, increases and decreases and one way you can increase is by making a stitch and I'm gonna and to do that I'm just going to take a needle in my left hand and I'm going to go underneath this strand of yarn here. And I'm going to purl into that. And 
and I have a now I have five pearls there. And you can see this head gets a little bit of a gap there. It's part of the um, design element of the back pan. Okay, so I'm at 13. So I made one. I'm going to knit three, slip one, knit one, and pass stitch over. So what that means is I'm going to one, two, three, so I've knit three. I'm going to slip a stitch, so I'm going to insert my needle into the next stitch knitwise, and just transfer that stitch over to my right hand needle. Now normally this next stitch would be a purl, but I'm going to knit that one. And then I'm going to take this stitch that I slipped and pass it over the stitch that I just knitted. And that is a decrease. So I just got rid of that row of stitches there. Okay, and then I'm going to knit four. Then I'm going to knit two together. That's another decrease. So on this side, I did the pass stitch over to do a decrease. And that helps with the way that the cables are moving. By, by doing the slip, knit, and pass over, it helps to move my cable this way. And then on this side, my cable is going this way, so I knit two together and it'll help the stitches or the cable look as if it's going that way. Okay, so I'm knit three. And then I have Make one and purl five. I'm going to make one and I'm going to repeat that part of the pattern or part of the instructions one more time. So I'm going to make another stitch here. And then I'm going to make another stitch. Okay, now this is going to be the same, the reverse, but the same as what I did on this side. So I'm going to be eliminating this stitch here. To slip that stitch, knit the next one, and then pass that stitch back over. And then I'm going to knit these two stitches together. And then I need to make a stitch here.
Okay, that's that part. And then I'm going to do this section exactly the same as I did the first section. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of that row and I'm going to reverse my work. And now I'm going to be working on the wrong side or the reverse side of the work. So the, the right side is the side that everybody's going to see and the wrong side or the reverse side is the side that's on the back or the side that nobody's going to see. And generally, when you have a stockinette stitch going, you're going to do the reverse of what you just did on the front. So these stitches were purls, so on this side they're going to be knits. And then the stitches that I knit over on this side are going to be purls. And once you get going, you can sort of see which stitches are which. Because on the back side here, these are the knit stitches. And then these stitches that sort of look like a U, those are going to be the purl stitches. So let me just work my way across. So I just finished my reverse side. And now I'm going to do the next row. Now in this row, I'm going to be do, putting two knots in my trunk, I guess you call it, since it's the hollowed oak. Okay, now I'm ready to start my next pattern. Do the purl two. In this in this row, I need to do one of my twists. So I have a cable needle here, and I'm going to slip these two stitches onto my cable needle, and I'm going to hold them in the front. Now when I hold them in the front, that'll make the cable twist this way. If I were to hold them in the back, the cable would twist the other direction. So I'm going to hold that in front, knit the next two stitches, and then I'm going to take the cable ne needle, cable needle and knit the two stitches that I have on there. So essentially I just reversed those two sets of stitches. Okay, so I am on 15. means I'm going to purl five and make one. Okay, 
and I'm going to knit four, and then I'm going to do my cable twist. And I'm going to continue that across this row. So I finished that last row and did my reverse side. And I'm back on the right side. And I'm on my second pattern here. And this one is a non-twist row, so I'm just going to knit those four stitches. Okay, so I'm just going to purl the next six, next six stitches, and then I have a major crossing coming up here. Okay, now here, this cable and this cable are going to cross. So what we're going to do is slip the next eight stitches onto the cable needle, cable needle. And this time I'm going to be holding them in the back. So this cable is going to cross a, the front. to slip the last four stitches that are on my cable knit needle back onto the left hand side. So those are going to be the stitches from this rope that's going up the middle. stitches so they remain in the middle and then I'm going to knit the four stitches that are still remaining on my cable needle So this side will have crossed over the middle rope, and this side will have looked as if it crossed behind that rope. So just like down here. Just going to purl the next ones, the next stitches. Going to slip the next eight stitches and then I am going to hold those ones in the front. So 
where this cable is going to pass behind. I'll slip my four middle stitches back onto the needle. And then I'm going to knit the four stitches that are on my cable. And then I'll just go to the end of the row and do my back. Okay, I've worked a few more rows and I want to show you one more thing. So I'll continue working this as the pattern indicates. For the second pattern, at this point I'm doing some decreases and increases here to help create this space here. So I'm on, let's see, I'm on row 21 with that. So I'm going to pull three. And I'm going to purl two together. And to do that, I'm going to stick my needle from the back to the front of the next two stitches. So yarn over and pull through. Okay, and then I'm going to knit four. I believe I need to make one here. Knit four, make one twice. So I knit four. I'm going to make one here and I'm going to purl that. Knit four. I'm going to make one and purl that. And then I'm going to knit four. And that is starting to open up, <clears throat> starting to open up that cable so that the rope in the middle will be, will stand out. Okay, this cable here, I'm going to pull, Purl two together, purl three, and then repeat from the star, which will be a purl two together. Roll two together. You can see this is starting to make that diamond shape in the middle there. Hit four. And I'm going to make one. Knit four. And make one.
think I lost a stitch there somewhere. Yep, there it is. And then Curl two together and then we'll finish off with my pearl three, knit four, pearl three. Okay, this first pattern here, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here to get the cable to sort of swell out and then get this um, seated pattern in the middle. I'm going to knit your pearl three. And then because I want this to start moving that way, I'm going to slip this one stitch onto my needle Hold it in the back, knit the next two stitches. So I want these this cable to move to the right. I'm going to pearl off of I'm going to knit off of the back. And then what I'm doing in the middle here is a pearl one knit one pearl one pattern. So I have my knit one, the pearl one, knit one, and pearl one. And then I want this side to move towards the left. So I'm going to take these two stitches, put them on my cable stitch, and hold those in front. I'm going to knit the next stitch, and then knit these two stitches. Let me... So that is the front side. You can see those two cables on the side are beginning to move towards the edges. And I'm going to have my stitches in the middle here. And like I said, they're made up of pearl, knit, pearl, knit. And then on the other side, Remember how I said to make the stock in that stitch, which is like this, you do the reverse of what you did on the other side. I want to start out that way. So I'm going to start out with knitting these stitches. Okay, I'm going to knit first three stitches. So these two pearls are my cable, so I'm going to purl those. Now this is a section where I have that seated look. And here, instead of purling the stitch, purling the pearls and knitting the knits, I'm going to do the opposite. So where I have a purl stitch, 
and go into knit. Where I have a knit stitch, go into purl. Knit, purl. Knit, and then finish off as normal. So if I usually if I knit on the front, I purl on the back, but this time I'm going to I knit on the front, I'm going to knit on the back as well, and that's going to give me that alternating pattern, sort of like a checker block seed look to it. And then I'll just finish off the rest of the row as normal. So I'll be knitting my knits and purling my purls. Until I get down to the other end where I will repeat that same process. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some examples of cables and Hopefully you'll try some. No, no. So I hope you enjoyed learning about some of the different cables that you can create through knitting and give it a try. You might end up with a great big mess at first, but it's all part of the fun of learning it. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. I'll see you next time. Bye.